Every bite to the cookie. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for December 16th, 2013. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Welcome to what is expected to be the last meeting of the year. Um, hopefully that holds form. And we take care of all the business that needs to be taken care of. Uh, so there's a warrant to be signed. Um, and then we have October 21st minutes. So I'll entertain a motion regarding minutes. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the minutes for 10-21-13. Uh, Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, okay. So we have some licenses to go through. Just at you. So we have the uh, common Biddler license for par at 97. Um, okay, so this is this is not the one we did for the previous year. This is just a new one, anyway. This is a new one for the new restaurant. Okay. Yes. So, and this expires December thirty first, right? Two thousand fourteen. Chair, I move that we ex um, renew the automatic amusement license for Par ninety seven, to which expires on December thirty first, two thousand and fourteen. Okay, we went from automatic amusement to vic common victual. Oh, I'm but we, we need to do both anyway, right? That's fine. Yeah, you're doing the addendum, and he's still yeah. on the agenda. Second. <laughs> Third. Uh, although, <laughs> is there any problem jumping around to the addendum, or does that need to be in any particular order? All right. All those in favor of Phil's motion. <laughs> Aye. 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 I'm just in a rush to get down there and start you, these golf you, things. That's <laughs> all. You got a vote? Aye. Thank you. Five, right. five unanimous. Excellent. You seen a swing? You don't want it. Today. Yeah, I know. They <laughs> definitely want me there. They, they don't want me. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, so, Mr. J, I also uh, move that we uh, renew the common vitro license for Power 97 expiring December 31st, 2014. Second. Motion to second. Any question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is that everything for Part 97? No, one more thing. That's what we have. Where is it? Oh, sorry, Sunday. Okay. The next one is the uh, hours change. I'll entertain a motion. Sure. Uh, Chair, I, I move that we amend the existing alcohol. License for Par 97, uh, Clifford Eula, LLC, doing business as Par 97, change from operating hours from noon to 10 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. There's probably some discussion on this. So just to clarify, this is to change the hours of the liquor license. Mr. Chairman, I have a question, and the question is why. Well, maybe we can well, have the applicant step up. Write the applicant up, and it's great. We get to see you every two weeks. We're gonna, it's it's going to be strange we're not seeing you every two weeks. You'll probably miss us, too, I'm sure. But right. uh, The purpose for it is, is that uh, we plan to start doing Sunday brunches, and we opened it up. Mm -hmm. Where we have the alcohol license for 8 a.m., we'd like to have the alcohol license when we open up at 10 a.m. on Sundays also. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, another question, if I might. Right. Janet, the other liquor licenses in town on Sundays, is it is the club at 10 a.m. also? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. My questions are answered, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Terry, anything? 
But once we do this, this will carry over year to year, or do, do we keep coming forward for this as every year? I'm trying to remember. Is this a permanent amendment? That next year when we renew the license, it would be for these hours? Yes. I'm thinking that the license before had, had that. Had they come for us at 10 a.m.? No. It was a change. The golf course did. The golf course did. Okay. Coaches didn't open it. Okay. So once we do this, we won't have to worry about it. If this will just carry over with the licenses, we do it year to year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we always have the option to change that, right, on a renewal, if there's been issues. Right? You can, well, you can do a lot of things if right. there's issues. Right. Okay. Right. okay. Well, yeah, as I, I noticed, there's a day missing when this manager certificate is missing. It's, it's, yeah, the, the date is missing. I don't know how that is on ours, but. <clears throat> I don't know. The, was this on the last date we were here? Yeah, Jan, I think we left that. You know, we left that blank because we weren't. We we weren't able to make it in that Jan, that instead of coming back to different times, I couldn't make the November meeting, so we decided that's what that is not. Just would be when he, when it, when you signed it. So it should. You wanna. Oh, when we signed it. Yeah, I don't know what, what's that date on that one. There isn't a date done, so he has a copy of the same thing. Just when you signed it, it's only a manager's certificate. I don't know what the date was. Well, your letter to the Board of Selectmen was October 23rd, if that helps. That's right, I think that's when it was. Because Martin was here with us. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to send my copy, it's just like, I, whatever. Okay. All right. Good catch. Any uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah, generally I've been against this um, ten o'clock, but in terms of a competitive disadvantage where the club has ten, they'll, I'm, sh I'm sure they'll be open for brunch. I wouldn't want to see you know uh, the, the uh, Pi 97 at a competitive disadvantage, but I do have my concerns. Just just Sundays for me is a little different. And 10 a.m. seems a little bit early, but uh, I've voiced that my, my opinion right. in the past about that. So, but I do agree for parity. Right, exactly. And then monitoring is key. If there's an issue, we take action. Luckily to date, as far as we know, there's been no issues in general. So, um, okay. Any other comments before we vote? No, I just say I think it's great. I uh, I think it gives us another option to stay in town as opposed to try to have to go and drive out elsewhere. I think that. Uh, Generally speaking, in Georgetown, we don't have a problem with uh, uh, over drinking like many other communities. I know it does happen, uh, but uh, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful idea. Um, and I think that it's, uh, it's something that uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on to make sure that it, you, know, you guys are compliant with all the uh, and we will too. security and safety that goes along with that. So we will too. I've been in favor of this from, from the start. I think it, it's, uh, it's good to, to continue to drive business for us. Here in Georgetown. Will we be fully up on running? Um, we could I'll open tomorrow if we chose to. Mm -hmm. We're ready. All right. When do you think you, what's the answer? Our target date is January 6th now. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Good. good. Best of luck. All yeah, right. Good well, luck. Let's, let's take our vote <coughs> before we shuttle them off and bring them back again in three weeks. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. You can still come and sit in the meetings if you want, just for fun. <laughs> and we're on TV too if you miss us. So. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Make sure to put that on down at the place down there. All right. Lively entertainment. Yeah. Say the 16th. Yeah. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. I got an extra handicap Christmas. just so you know. Excuse me. I got an extra handicap, a couple strokes just so you know. See, when you're in there, there's this little button called. Skip. A mulligan. <laughs> a mulligan. <laughs> as many times as you want. You better get a warranty on, <laughs> warranty on that button. That yeah. button's going to get worn out. I feel we'll hit that button a lot. We'll do fine then together. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, let's do the, uh, let's just the ZBA waiver for the middle high school new sign. Then I want to go to the personnel board so we don't 
keep our audience too late. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we waive the $200 fee for the um, middle high school, new middle high school sign. It's the $200 ZBA application fee. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. I only jump down to um, appointments and approvals for a minute, and uh, what, we lost Beverly. I think she went out to see if she could contact Chris Rich. Okay. Well, then we're going to keep going down the agenda, and we'll we'll join when she gets back in here. Um, just in terms of correspondence, uh, and the MMA annual business meeting is on January twenty fifth. Um, it's scheduled from 10.15 to 11.45 a.m. on January 25th, 2014, Ballroom A at the Heinz Convention Center in Boston. And Mike, is there any significance for us in being there for this? For the annual business meeting, no. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to attend uh, any of the functions or the... Um, Industrial show, I, I'd highly recommend that, but uh, not, not the business meeting. Okay. Um, okay. This is just to uh, make me your proxy for the the any any votes that would come at the meeting. Authorize me to vote on behalf of the board of selectmen. Do we do this? Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, uh, allow uh, town administrator our proxy vote for the MMA meeting on January 25th. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Represent us well. <laughs> In what way would you be representing us? Typical type of uh, election of uh, officers uh, and the adoption of any uh, policy recommendations. So uh, do we have prior knowledge of that type of thing? Or? We will uh, get them to you. Uh, uh, we'll have at least, I think, two meetings before then. Okay. Um, so I, I guess my question would be you will you keep us advised on, on oh, what's coming up and, yeah. and so mm -hmm. that we okay yes thank you okay we got a motion and we, we got a second motion and a second all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. aye. great um, and then we have a notice um that Georgetown Mobile um, and that uh, as an existing agent in our community will be sent an application agreement to sell the Keynote to Go product. Uh, objections must be within writing 21 days of receipt of this letter, uh, which looks like it would be um, by December 21st. Um, do they, uh, is they currently sell this product? Is this like a renewal notice or is this a new thing? I think they already do. Because it says existing, so I'm assuming that yeah, they I do. Yeah, I think they already do. Okay. Uh, I'll just throw it to the board for if there's any questions about that. But. Nope. Okay. So now, back. So we'll, let's jump ahead to the uh, personnel board joint appointments. Uh, and we have four candidates that uh, have put their name in, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, this is a bunch of you guys come on up. Since this is a try appointment. <coughs> Um, so this uh, is um, a little, uh, unique for some of our boards in that it requires a three boards 
to vote. Um, Mike, can you just explain the process when we have three boards, how the decision is actually made, just so everybody, I know we've talked about it, but just so everybody understands what, what how that works. Sure, the, the bylaw states that the, the point, this is a, a tri-board appointment. Uh, the selectmen have to vote, um, and then they, you, the selectmen vote uh, to nominate uh, certain uh, individuals. The, the finance committee votes to nominate, puts, puts a, a candidates ahead of uh, in nomination, and, and then the moderator also does the same thing. Uh, but each, there's only three votes. Selectmen get one vote. Uh, Finance committee gets one vote, and the moderator gets one vote. And uh, um, whichever candidates get a majority vote are then appointed. Excellent, great. Um, and I guess before we start, uh, Jim's here for the uh, plan, uh, finance, finance committee. Finance right. committee. Um, and the committee, as a group, has expressed some concern about moving forward with the personnel board. Yes. That's right. Um, so I wanted to, before we discuss candidates, I just wanted to give you a minute, uh, if you wanted, just to sure. kind of talk um, about the concern. And I do want to emphasize to everybody, this is about the board. There's been not about the people. Not about the people. That's right. This is specifically about the function of the board and its That's existence. Right. First of all, the, the finance committee voted not to recommend any any appointments to the um, personnel board, and the the feeling of the finance committee is that we agree with the Department of Revenue. We think that the um, personnel board is, first of all, hasn't functioned well over the past few years. It's been difficult to get people, although you seem to have people, uh, but it hasn't functioned well. And, and we think it's superfluous. We think that Mike is the, uh, the director of uh, personnel and that those decisions should be made by him. And if there are issues, I know there are concerns about where would people go if they had some kind of grievance, Right. Well, this is this kind of committee is not normal. It's not common in towns, even in towns our size. It, it's I would think it would simply be a case of finding out how other people handle that and, and doing it. So it's again, we just agree with the Department of Revenue. It's a it's a, a committee that hasn't functioned well. They don't think it's a good idea. We don't think it's a good idea. Okay, so I would just so okay. question on it. Sure, go ahead. You said they don't think it's a good idea. The Department, and we don't think, oh, the Department of Revenue okay. meaning they doesn't right. think it's a good idea. The FinCom doesn't think it's a good idea. That we would like to you know, have Mike act as the okay. so, personnel. Well, first of all, thank you for laying that out. I guess my concern with that position, to put it out there, is that, first of all, we we as the selectmen took that opinion into account when we right. looked at it this fall. Um, and I think there could be, say, there's a number of reasons, but one of the fundamental reasons was that we didn't believe it was appropriate to make a significant town government change during a fall meeting. Also, there was some thought about getting the board to give them a chance to get together again, um, and also taking more time to incorporate the overall government reevaluation structure as part of the DOR. So given that, right now, according to this town, the voters have approved a personnel board. And so our concern is that the boards have obligations as to serve the town. And so the town hasn't made a change yet. So I, I completely understand the opinion of the board. And, and you're just here, Jim, so it's, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm just saying in general, is that regardless of that, you know, because there's times that some of us don't agree with what we have to do is that right now the way this town functions is pretty clear is that we're the personnel board um, also I think from my take on the last meeting my opinion was it was pretty clear this is going to come up for reevaluation in the spring as to the role of the personnel board and I think uh, again part of the opinions that were mentioned were if we're going to reevaluate in the spring it would be seem fair and appropriate to let the board function as is currently defined in our bylaws um, during that process. And not even going to call it a trial period per se, it's just that we failed to enact any change in the fall, 
So that's our current piece. So um, I'm just going to throw it out there is that that was my concern when I saw the opinion of it is that, you know, uh, in, for, never mind just FinCon, but the boards in town need to operate under the bylaws that we have and advocate for change. Um, and if that change doesn't occur, we still need to uphold the responsibilities there. So I understand that you, you're, uh, you're kind of board's giving you direction tonight That's in terms right. of which way you're going to do. And right. so I'm not trying to sway that. I'm just putting it out there as a concern that I saw on that process. I, I, I'm not sure I agree. I think that um, what you're doing is creating a board and then very likely, I would think, disbanding it again in, in a, just a few months. And, and I don't think that, that necessarily serves the needs of the town either. Um, we don't know what the voters are going to do. Well, yeah, but I mean, if, if, <laughs> if all of us recommended the personnel board you know, be disbanded, then I'm sure that the people in town would agree with that. And I, you know, I, I get the sense that there, there is a feeling I mean, that that's the case. But, right. uh, um, I'm with you on the tea leaves and probabilities, yeah. but the reality is it is what it is today, and we don't know what's going to happen in the spring meeting. That's you know, because we can forecast probabilities, and, and uh, again, not disagreeing with you from that perspective. But my concern it is what it is today. And just one other point, if sure. I may. Um, it, actually, I brought this up at our meeting as well. It, there doesn't appear to be any any major issues before the personnel board right now, which is another reason that we thought, well, you know, it doesn't make sense in, for the short term to to appoint those people, and, and where there aren't a lot of issues. I guess did uh, did FinCom talk about if spring town meeting comes and goes and personnel board still intact? Well, we'd have to we'd have to do something. Now. We didn't talk about that. Okay, that was just talk about that. I don't want you to for I don't want you to guess. So I was just wondering yeah. if you talked about it. Okay, with that, first of all, I just thought it was important to get that out on the table. Um, um, Sandy, the chair, took time to to write it out in the document and communicate with everybody, which was good. Um, so that being said. Um, unless someone else has something to add on that matter, we'll, we'll go to nominations. Well, Mr. Chairman, before we even sure. get there, I think um, I had a couple quick questions. When was the original bylaw adopted? Do we know? 77 or something? Way back in the 70s. It was a it's been amended several times since then. Right, right. So we have a bylaw, again, that's, that maybe um, was good for the times. Maybe now it's, it's time that we have a, and, and no offense to the existing members of the committee, but we have a professional that handles the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, uh, personnel issues. Now, as far as the conflict goes, you know, we've, we've dealt with personnel issues in an executive session, you know, without getting specific, and, and they were part of the collective bargaining agreement. So we've made the final determination on, on personnel issues in the past where somebody had a, had a problem and came to us, and we made the decision. So what would be... That's still our role, though, when it's collective bargaining, right? Yeah. There's a, that's right. that's defined as our role. It would, it so, would really so only apply to non-union personnel. So so what you're telling me is then the personnel committee only deals with non-union personnel issues? When it, when it comes to grievances. Okay. Uh, although, yes, that's, that's correct. So if a non... Non-union person, uh, uh, non-union employee had a problem, they would go to you. If they weren't satisfied, they would, go, they would go to their supervisor. Right, and then, then from there, if they weren't satisfied with the whatever the decision was, would they they would go to you? <clears throat> okay. So if you felt like you couldn't handle it or there was an issue, where would you bring it? Well, no, I I would make a decision one way or the other, right. uh, and if the aggrieved didn't like my decision, then they would appeal it. To who? Um, we, we haven't done it before, so I'm, uh, I'd have to look it up. We did it once before, Michael. We had an occasion when uh, Mike's predecessor was here. He was an employee that uh, went through a vacation time issue. Mm -hmm. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yep. That's right. And uh, so that yeah. got rectified at the personnel Board level. Yes. Yeah. She appealed uh, the town administrator's decision to the personnel board, mm -hmm. and Mr. Delaney came in. 
the employee came in, mm -hmm. she stated her case. He came in and told us his thoughts about it. And at one point, <coughs> um, we discussed with him, wouldn't it be better to have a happy employee over, and it was a matter of one day, four hours, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and we worked so, it out. I don't want to wouldn't mention right. any names, right. but but, but we from worked there, it out. from there, if that person still was not satisfied, what would be their recourse? Would they would they have superior court? Okay, so wouldn't come to the board of selectmen. Uh, I take that back. It would. She could appeal it to the board of selectmen. Okay, absolutely. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's my that. That's where I was going with that. Okay, that's just for my own thought process. I think. I think. This board needs to decide, you know, before we even get to nominations, do, are we, you know, do we want to go ahead and appoint, you know, or leave, leave things the way they are until the bylaw? So I think that's, I think we have to discuss that before we even right. get into nominating people. Because I, I think the people part of it's out, out of the equation. I just think it's the decision is about the board itself, you know, and, and what role it plays in the day-to-day -day operations of the town. Right. So I'm with you there. My only concern was that we had that discussion. Right. And but however, I, I will, let me add this one thing. We were, I was not aware, and I don't think this board was aware of the vote that was taken by FinCom that night we had, this discuss, had that major discussion. I know for a fact I, that was not brought up. So if I had known that, maybe my attitude would, you know, I would have done a little more research. And uh, my attitude may have changed or my opinion may have changed about, you know, the necessity to have the finance committee. I mean, uh, personnel board so so I wasn't aware of that I didn't know that that discussion had taken place and we weren't that wasn't communicated to us at that time right well but the FinCom opinion was communicated at that time right nope not not the night we had our major discussion absolutely no, not I, 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 don't know. I think our discussion may have preceded that I'm not nope sure. yeah. the next no. morning no nope, because the next morning I got an email from a <laughs> finance committee member that said do you guys know that we voted not to you know do this so we had the discussion the week before when we didn't have a quorum, right? That's when we had the, was, am I remembering that one right? There was, Mr. Rich was here and there was an, an elderly no, lady. Wasn't this a, I, I believe was a lady that so was So we here. ended up with Mrs. a quorum. Blanchard. We ended up Mrs. with a quorum. Yes. Mrs. Blanchard. Blanchard, yeah, she was part of the original right, like person. Like that thing. night, when we had that major discussion and we were trying to get facts and just information, we were not aware at that point in time that FinCom had voted no. And their opinion was not to, to reinstate, you know, not to have this, this board uh, up and running, so. That, that's just my but, where I'm at. Well, so I'm testing my memory here, but when we had the discussion before we had the quorum, Jim, were you here for that? I was here. Yes, I was here for the discussion, but it, there was no decision made at that meeting. Right, there, so there was no vote. Okay. There was no point. vote. Right. right. Okay. I was here for that, yes. It, just, if, if I may, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair? We have used the personnel board, and it, you know it's not just like a grievance board. When when we were considering uh, the increase of hours for the fire chief, we also sent them stuff to them as an advisory board to help advise us. I believe that they're used uh, sometimes on different hiring procedures here, and I think before, um, when we made a change with. Uh, when they were hiring the planner and deciding to, how to split that up, I, I thought those type of things also went to the personnel board as, as sort of an advisory board for us. So it's, it's, it's not just a grievance board. We, as, as a board, have used that board for that type of advice in, in the past. Um, and I think when this started coming up, there was something about it being, Mike had said that they were dysfunctional, and I thought that Mike was looking to them for help. I'm not sure if I can remember. Well, I remember you saying that the board was dysfunctional. Now, I don't know why, and, 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 and looking for the change on what was coming from you, Mike. And that, because I can remember well, the reason it was dysfunctional was because we hadn't appointed anybody. Well, that, I, I don't know that I, they weren't meeting. They weren't right. functioning. So in that respect, they were dysfunctional. But they, they but just- But they hadn't been appointed. No, there was, no there was we, had, we had three members, and it was very difficult for all three of them to get together at the same time uh, to form a quorum. Mr. Chairman, if I might, Chris, how long did you have a quorum in the, that board not meet? Do you, would you know that off the top of your head? 
We met. It was a long period of time. We only meet. The personnel board only meets when there's a personnel issue. Mm -hmm. At the call of the chair, if you will. We schedule a meeting. And I would respectfully disagree with Michael. Um, sometimes we had to, what we would do is call each member and find out how their schedule was, and we would schedule a meeting that respected everybody's schedule. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember having a very hard time getting the board together. We always met within a week of whenever we were needed to, mm -hmm. unless someone were away. Right. Um, well, I mean, how many times did you meet over the last year? That, that would be the question. I mean, how many? How much of the last year did we have enough members? Well, that's the point. When when did that person drop off? And how, going back, how many times did you meet? I think they had a quorum up till June thirtieth, because I think that's when. That's when Debbie. Uh, it was, uh, it was right Rogers before that, resigned. between May or June. Yeah. Debbie so June of thirteen. So if, Robin, if I if I can fine. interject, last winter, one one of the primary functions of the of the personnel board is to approve positions, uh, either uh, you know creating new ones or changing them up. And that's why the planner's position we added a lot of different functions to it. So and they also approve uh, approve not create job descriptions too. Um, yeah. And in last winter, the library wanted to create, uh, upgrade a position, get rid of one, and 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 upgrade it. Um, and there were three meetings scheduled that were and ended, ended up being canceled because of a lack of core. Because mm -hmm. Ruth Ruth was trying to. This was a very critical position for her, and she she couldn't get the position created. Uh, in in the end result, a, a review of the, um, the statutes, the Mass General Law, the, um, the library board is an autonomous elected board and uh, they were able they're allowed to hire and fire at their at their own discretion so they created the, the position and and the position is now in existence but they couldn't get the personnel board to meet so so what would assuming that that board didn't have their own uh, autonomy where would that go would that come to you in that case, but if I there was no I'm, I'm not authorized to create a new position. Right. So who is? Only the. So if personnel there's no board. so if there's no personnel board, then there's no no ability for us to create new positions in the town. No. Legally. Today. 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 Yeah. Based on just the way the bylaw. <coughs> right. Okay. So. I feel like we're rehashing the, hashing yeah. the conversation. Let me get back to what I think is the issue. The people at home have a set of bylaws in place for this town that they voted on. We're elected to uphold them. We had our chance this fall to offer a bylaw change to those people, our people, us. We did not. We, did, we voted against it. And some of us for different reasons. Um, my particular one was just I didn't think when about making a major government change during fall meeting, I thought it would be more appropriate in the spring. It wasn't necessarily an endorsement of, I think, the planning, but this particular board is the right decision, but I'm open to discussion. I think a lot of good both back and forth went on. So as of right now, we have four people who have stepped forward to be on a board that's in our bylaws. And if I'm sitting at home, I'm wondering why are we not enforcing that? because we, we, we had our chance to take it. And if we think that there needs to be a change, we should be following our rules, which is this spring, uh, bring an amendment to um, the warrant and let the people vote on it. Um, and I think there's gonna be, and part of what I've been saying is I think there's gonna be 
other potential changes that go along with that based on the DOR recommendations. So I can understand, hey, does it make sense to have the board here short term? Well, it's not short term if the town says I want to keep them, right? So we, we don't know that. Um, we didn't vote on the change. That's what the, the bylaws say. So I guess the question is, you know, do we really want it where boards have that wide of an interpretation of who and when we appoint people if we don't like the bylaw? Because doesn't, this is where I'll show my, you know, doesn't CONCOM fall into the same situation where we appoint them? Yes. So we could just say, you know what, I'm not going to use them specifically. There's a committee out there that's having issues. I'm just not going to appoint them, even though that's what. So I'm concerned about that fundamental piece of it. We had our chance. We didn't pursue it after a lot of conversation. The people expect an obligation from us. And I, I'm failing to see why we wouldn't fulfill that obligation, given that we have volunteers, and then pursue the course we're on, which is following our bylaws and, and, and our town process and make a change in the spring if we feel strongly about it. One comment, Mr. Chair. Sure, go ahead. We are, we are elected to manage the affairs of the town. And I, I agree with you. I, I agree the path that you're going down. However, if there's a board and there are members on that board that are not fulfilling their obligation, when it comes time to renew them, we, we are under no obligation to renew those people. You know, we're here, again, to manage the, whole, the, the affairs of the town and the, and the reason why we're, we're charged with appointing people is to make sure that they're doing their job. I agree 100%. They're not overextending or they're not doing nothing. I agree. So, so let's, that's, that's the individual a slippery people. slope. That's not the board piece, right. though. That's well, not saying we don't like the board concept, so we're not going right. to pursue it. That's if the, it's our discretion to say, well, we think this person is a good fit or not a good fit. That's a very different discussion than... Well, I'm just using your CONCOM example. If we felt like the CONCOM was dysfunctional other than just for other reasons other than just uh, a quorum issue then when people come for renewal we would just renew them and find other people and put them on there i, I agree that's, 100%. that's the and, I, and i'm not that's, which what's again that's our basic responsibility to manage right. those affairs and and the next step is if we think we have the four wrong people tonight and i'm not saying we are <laughs> but just in theory if we follow right. that but then no one would get appointed right but i'm thinking that if we had three out of the four right people or whatever the right number is we should follow our normal process because that's what's expected to us. And we're not, I don't see us creating any jeopardy in the town by doing this, yeah. you know, from the perspective of danger, harm, or otherwise. Um, this is not public safety, fire department type situation. And it also closes the gap that if we do want a new position created, we have the means to do it with the board in place. I think I've been Everyone? quiet long enough. <laughs> Fire away. I totally agree with you. Part of our job as elected, your board, myself, and the FinCom, is to follow the process of the bylaws that we have as of right now. If you want to change the bylaws, change them. But until then, we should follow the process that the bylaws state we are to follow. Okay. I agree. And if I could just, Mr. Chair, just, uh, Dave, somewhat to your comments. The reason our board's dysfunctional is because we made appointments in June. It's now December, and we have not, as a board, got together and appointed anything. Right. It falls back to this board. But agree. I agree. I'm not disagreeing with you. Well, I think the dysfunctionality in terms of references that were made were prior. Well, so, but, but the point is we did hold off, hold off for a while till we made an interim decision. I believe we've we've made that decision not to pursue the the uh, bylaw addendum. So here we are, as charged by the the people to go through our process. And Dave, to your point, it doesn't mean we have to nominate people that we don't think are appropriate for the position. That's an individual discussion. That's a different piece of it versus saying a blanket blanket decision. So I won't jump ahead. I'll, I'll keep asking for comments. Can I have a question as to process? Sure. FinCom could send a representative to vote. In the future, or if it, this could happen before June, you know, someone could resign and we need to, do we all need to be together? Could not the Board of Selectmen, just like the FinCom, said we vote for Joe? 
one vote. Who, who, that's how it works. That's that's normally the way it's done, actually. So that we we at a, a meeting we would vote. You would uh, the board of selectmen would vote, uh, and then we would get that vote and we would vote on it at one of our meetings. Is that? That's the way it's been done in the past, well, as I recall. The, the way I, I read the bylaw is that there has to be three votes, th three votes cast at a single meeting really? of, of the yes. Board of Selectmen. Okay. At the, of the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Okay. And, but to get to your one vote, you as a separate body need to, uh, you have four four people that have volunteered. Somebody has to nominate them to go forward, and then the five of you vote separately on the nomination to go forward. Yes. So I guess what I'm getting to is we could at any time vote on a nomination as they came in. Yes. Okay? Then they could get together at a later date and say that the Board of Selectmen voted last week to do this, so the, so that no, night... No, he just said we have to be together. No, all three boards have to be present. A representative from all three have to be present at one joint at meeting. At the Board of Selectmen's meeting, he said. Yes. I'm just saying that we don't have to... We could vote to put a member for... Nominees. Not a nominee. It doesn't have to be the same night that we're all meeting. Right. You could yeah. have done okay. a last meeting in yes. anticipation okay. of meetings. Yes. So the tonight. nominees from the Board so of Selectmen it, are it, and the it, nominees from... Moderator, they could be done separately. Do you have meetings by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what the finance right. committee did. They they met and they voted to against any voted against right. any. We didn't vote. We didn't vote against someone. We voted yes. not to nominate and anyone. So, so we're not against anyone. No, I understand. <laughs> we voted not to nominate. Just let me clarify though. So, yeah. does that mean um, oh, I'm if FinCom changed all of a sudden? They don't have a quorum here tonight, so they can't take a vote anyway. They've already had their vote. But if so, in terms of voting in this room, right? If this, if the, if the vote has to be done in this room. No, he, he's going to. He's yeah, been. He, they've taken their vote, and he's here to present their vote. But they haven't had any nominees. Yeah. They, but, well, they they had three people at that top point. Uh, I believe. Um, See, that confuses the yeah, process. Yeah, there were three. Well, it was uh, uh, Chris and um, Alan Olson and Bob and, Watts. and Bob Watts. Those were the three people that had volunteered at, uh, at that time, and they voted none of the above. But uh, you confuse me now because you, you said before that the vote had to be done here. So just uh, just go back for my. When you slowness. cast the three votes, one vote from the selectmen, one vote vote from the finance committee, and one vote from the moderator, that has to be done in a, uh, an a, official posted meeting. Right. And and their vote was done at a, an official posted meeting. And your vote is going to need to take place before the so, three votes are so, cast. So for the so new person, then, the for the new person, then yeah. they can't have an opinion because they don't have a quorum. That's right. That's more what I was getting at. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that any nomination that came forward, that they basically won't have the ability to vote on, because they don't have a quorum. By saying they didn't right. want to vote at all, basically, isn't that just an abstention? That's, yeah. 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 But yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, that's, if, that's if exactly, there was a change. That's, in my mind, that's what we right. would just abstain from right. voting for right. anyone. That's right. Yeah. So when it comes that's down right. to it, there'll be three votes. You'll cast our vote for the selectmen. Mm -hmm. Beverly will cast hers. And Jim will cast one for or abstain right. from uh, I'm with you there. FinCom. I'm with you. But yeah. just in terms of if there were new nominations, the FinCom couldn't have an opinion anyway tonight because they can't vote on that right. nomination. Right. That would be the that one was that was submitted point. tonight. That would be the okay. only one. Okay. Yeah, I, I look at it this way. I mean, I'm on the fence here, but I, I look at the three things. Um, one, I do recognize that we have a bylaw in place, but you know what? I. I look at those bylaws, and while they're the directive of what the town wants to have happen, if the things aren't happening, we have the right to um, to fix that. Uh, with the DOR recommendation, the Finance and Advisory Board, and the Town Administrator, all in alignment that they think it's a um, duplicitous process, and it doesn't need to be a, um, and if anything, it might even impede the, the stuff getting getting in the way. Um, I, I don't understand why we even need a personnel board at this point. 
I think a lot of those activities um, should be done by a professional. And I think the liability of, of what happens on personnel issues is so high that I, I wouldn't want to put that onus on, on a personnel board of individuals. Um, I do realize that the DOR review that came out, I'm not sure why that we pulled this just this one out at a Springtown meeting. I don't think we're going to be ready to even vote on anything um, on the DOR uh, review. I think we need some, some more process to go through that. Um, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to get the, the Finance Committee is going to either abstain or vote against it. And, uh, and and our board is going to make a decision one way or the other if we want to nominate anyone to go forward. I just don't see, you know, for me, I'm not running in the day-to-day -day operations here. So I can see Mike's point um, and making sure that he can accomplish his job professionally here in the, in the, company, in the, in the town. The Finance and Advisory Board, you know, they're looking at the DOI recommendation as well and uh, from experience. And, and our TA has, uh, has said that. So there's three entities. Um, that uh, don't believe we even need it. Well, who's the third? DOR, the Finance Advisory Board, and the Town Administrator. Right. I don't want to get in the way of, you know, uh, because I'm not in the day-to-day -day activities of what happens here, I, I want to make sure that things are done as efficiently and uh, without as much uh, risk as possible. So, any more? again, I'll go to the, the, the fact of DOR doesn't run the town. That's just a recommendation. FinCom is very well respected. It's a recommendation. Um, and Mike certainly knows the inside scoop of what's going here. But so two out of the three boards here, or two out of the three votes, are still active in terms of how the, it was structured. So, again, my concern is. And so you, have, you haven't heard me advocate for the personnel board at this point in terms of, because I was one of the people that, that brought it forward as to questioning it. My whole concern is the perception of the people who voted for us if we decide to basically ignore a bylaw that when we have volunteers or a board that's in the bylaws, we just choose not to move forward. That's my concern. I think I've, I've stated it clearly. I would not be happy as a voter if I saw that. Unless there was imminent danger or harm or financial ruin, you know, approaching where we had to make a, a smart decision, I don't see. I haven't seen any of that jeopardy here at this point. I, I haven't seen. All I know is if they're not in place right now, we can't put a new position in. That's the only negative thing I've seen. Right, and we're talking all of. Well, wait, wait a second. What? If they're not in place, that means that the director of of uh, personnel would be putting those positions forward. No, they can't. That's Isn't that the role of the director of personnel to 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 uh, make the recommendation, make recommendations to the, recommendations. the personnel board? Yes. Right. Well, we right. But if there is no personnel board, you've got to make recommendations to us. No. Uh, no. Legal counsel said that's not. How, that's what I'm saying is we are stuck in our bylaws and process that there can be no new position. Am I correct me if I'm wrong? That's, that's my understanding. And no matter what we vote tonight, that doesn't change. But because we're in the middle of a budget year, and the chances of somebody wanting a new position is pretty slim. That's true. It's only a new Probably position not if, gonna the, happen. if the job description doesn't exist. It's only a new position if the job description doesn't already exist. So if we wanted to hire a new police officer and add an additional police officer, we don't need the personnel board to do that. If we wanted to hire a, you know, a superintendent of the police department, then we would have to have personnel committee. So it's only for newly created positions, mm -hmm. if we already have a job description, we can fill, this board can fill and, and, and fill, fill those positions. Yes. So right. This is about new positions. And again, I'm not saying it's like a major game, but I'm saying that's the only, right. that's newly that's created the only negative position. thing I've heard in terms of restrictions. Right. I haven't heard in terms of if the board is put in place between now and the spring meeting, whether or not it continues or not. Well, it would be also include uh, updating uh, job descriptions. So I, I can't understand that for a second here. So we're saying that if we don't have a personnel board, but we have a director of personnel, who is the head of personnel, we can't create new positions. That just can't happen. But his bylaw is very the bylaw is very soft on Mike being head of personnel, right? That was that was the bylaw change that was brought forward in the fall to to make that solidify that. 
my my job is to make recommendations in in, in certain day to day operations. I, you know, I don't go to the personnel board. I don't need to go to the personnel board. Uh, but in changing job descriptions, creating new positions, uh, changing pay scales, that hasn't been done since 2003. Um, you know, uh, those things are, are specifically uh, given the authority, the only authority is in the town is the personnel board. So, Mike, in the next six months, you, do you anticipate having any of those issues to, to, to be confronted with? I mean, you're going to hit a, you're gonna, yes. you're going to, yes. Yes. Okay. There, there'll probably be requests for new positions and, I mean, the job descriptions we have are from 2002, 2003. I gave the personnel board all brand new descriptions in 2010, and they haven't been acted upon. What do you mean by that? They haven't been acted upon. Haven't been voted on, right? I, I did a, a, a <coughs> wage and salary review and updated all job descriptions in 2010. And the board didn't vote to take action on them, you're saying? That's right. For lack of quorum or? Mm, I don't know. Well, I don't, so I don't want to, so, but point is that there are things to be accomplished. In sure. Theory, in that, in that, so there, there, there are things that the board could accomplish. Let's just call it five months, four months, whatever, just, if, until a decision point is made and again how essential they are in the next four or five months you know I'm not in a good position to tell whether you know that piece is there or not so um, again my or some my, my concern is this we had this conversation mm -hmm. we had it and, and we had well, the we chance didn't, to we bring weren't it that forward. specific about we were not that specific about things that needed to be done in between now and town meeting we never got into that but they don't have to they, they still have to be done between now and town meeting. So don't, right. I'm just well, asking well, if there right. are things that could right. be done right. by a functioning personnel board. So I'm not saying, hey, we need this done by then. Right, but we didn't we didn't talk about this the last time. Sure, sure we did. The 2010 uh, Well, that, that particular issue, but I, for me, leaving that last meeting, I, I thought there was nothing that really needed to be done. Now Mike's saying there is between now and town meeting. Well, possibly, right? Not us. Well, yeah. I mean, I, so... Those things will sit, sit by the wayside and won't get done if we don't appoint a committee tonight. Yes. That's what you're telling me. Right. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Could I be recognized? Absolutely. Go ahead, Jerry. Usually, this usually is not my thing, but if you'd so please, I'd like to put forth a motion and we could perhaps end this discussion. I would love to hear a motion. I move, I don't know if we're going to get the dates right, but I would move to appoint Christopher Rich. To the personnel board with the term to expire June 30th, is that right? Of 2014. That's okay. So let's usually go the that. appointments are staggered. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. I'm going the way they're staggered. We right. got a 2014. I put staggered on here. I didn't know what the board wanted just, to do. Is June as... 30th the correct date or? So, uh, yes. June okay. 30th. All appointments. Go. Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion before we? Well, <coughs> there's a motion. I just want to know if there's a second on the table. I'll check it. Okay. okay. Discussion. So, <laughs> discussion. So, one thing I, in talking to Mike, because there is still significant issue about um, will the personnel board continue past May or not, right? Is is the question. Um, I recommended that um, rather than getting into an expanded staggered account uh, thing, is that we we focus on them all on June thirtieth this year, um, and then our first uh, action, if nothing happens at town meeting is our first appointments are then to create the new staggered effect but I think it's a fair reflection to say look we're appreciative that people have come forward and uh, the bylaw says this is what we wanted this is what we're expected to do but with a strong understanding that there's a lot of pushback going on here on this particular board so let's make the appointments appropriate uh, in line with that pushback one comment to that, if I might, Gary. I would not, I would not um, 
um, commit to staggered terms after town meeting. I, I would say we evaluate. If the if that bylaw doesn't happen, then we maybe go out one year rather than staggered. You know, into 2017. And I don't want to commit to that. You, yeah, well, you a, just said we would. Uh, I should, I should go say, back we, to staggered. We would, we I'm would, not committing to that yeah, at so all. Let me, let me just say we would we would reevaluate the appointments. There you go. After that point, in right. It's open. Right now, there's only one motion, and that's for 2014, June 30, right. 2014. Right. So I was that, just setting up for the next with, one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just say this. So, uh, I don't see how we don't appoint uh, the folks on the personnel board at this point, knowing now what I just learned that if this work needs to be done between now and June. If a situation comes up where we have to consider a new position, we wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, I just don't see how we'd not appoint uh, a personnel board at, at this point. Uh, this is all new new to me in terms of what your authority is as a director of of, uh, of uh, personnel. You're limited in what you can do between now and and if there unless there's any changes to your the bylaw on, on your uh, job description. It just completely changes my perspective. Uh, me too. I was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, how we got, we got our hands tied behind our back because we need a personnel board to accomplish the tasks at hand that you can't accomplish between now and then. Right. And then for May, we can evaluate is there a better way to do it than via the personnel board? Right. What if I didn't want to appoint people to the finance committee and I had four names that wanted to come in? I would be derelict uh, not making the appointments. That I'm supposed to make. Right. Just one comment to that, though, please. Let, you know, people have to be qualified. Mm -hmm. Just because you know there's there's a request for an appointment, doesn't necessarily mean that's the fit for that person for that board. So I just want to. No, I think we're already referring about. to a blanket commitment not to appoint a right, that's board. Right, right, that's what right. Beverly. Really My job is to appoint to the committee. Right, right. Not right. not just to appoint anybody, but if you have a qualified, right. well, qualified appointee. It's not taking a position that not building a quorum for a board. I don't know right? how I That's ever made it on the finance committee myself. <laughs> You're still fixing that. You call me Super Bowl Sunday to ask, interview me. <laughs> believe it or not. Anyway. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, just to rein back in here, we have a motion and a second uh, for for Chris Rich. Um, is there any other comment before we vote? So we're going to vote first, and then the vote happens. Try oh. board, right? We uh, vote yes. to nominate to allow you to cast a vote amongst the other three. Yes. This is us only. So well, I don't know if I'm casting the vote. I think our vote is the cast, right? right. Well, well, yeah. Voting to nominate. Yeah, our vote is yeah. our vote. Outcome is the nomination. Right. If I may, should I amend the motion that we vote to approve and approve for the chair to vote for us, or why don't we, when after we voted them, then make a motion? For the chair to represent well, us, I think the board selectman just has to vote. Yeah, I think that's it, it's inherent. In, the it's inherent in the. Yeah. This is just the nomination, right? Yeah, yeah it's just. Mm -hmm. This is just nomination. Sure right. <laughs> so this is not I'm just not to clarify. This is not. A, this is this is not approving Mr. Rich to be on the board yet. This is simply putting his hat name in the ring. Right. That's a nomination. Just as I clear in the so, process, Mr. Chair, I have a question. So, presuming that uh, come spring meeting, are we going to, as a board? Put or think about seriously putting uh, a change to the bylaw about the personnel board. Is that the direction on on this board I, at this point? I don't know which way it will go, but I will be bringing to the agenda for the board the review of the that DOR topic. recommendations, and that is one of the topics that we've discussed that would be included in that discussion. Okay. So what the outcome is. But we have a timeline for that, right? I mean, we need to move rather quickly. We need to move. The end of February. Very yeah, quickly. we got a lot, a lot of work to do. I don't see how we're going to be prepared to do anything with that. But uh, minutes. I think we'll be ready. Be done <laughs> discussing it. I, I don't think there's a lot of yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the issue. I think it's more was the timing before. But we'll find out. We got other pressing business, Gary. Okay. <laughs> um, any discussion? Any? All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right, so we have nominated Mr. Rich. Chris. Rich. Mr. Chairman. Are we going to do them one at a time or are we going to do them all? I was going to ask the process. We just do our yeah. nominations. Mm -hmm. Do your Mr. Chairman. Nominations. 
I nominate John Smolinski uh, to the Personnel Board with a term to expire June 30th, 2014. Second. Discussion. Yes. How many members are we appointing tonight? We've got four names. There are four names. You can appoint four people. What's the maximum that's size? Five. five. It can be five? Well, that might help with the quorum issues. Absolutely. The only problem is, though, if you get a two to two vote. I know. <laughs> but that might yeah. help with the quorum issues. But Over time. I, I, and, but they, if, if I may, they, they, all four fit the makeup that we need of the board, except for the one person out of the one employee out of town hall? Well, the. It, it's it's a slight misconception that it has to be an employee. It okay. says an, a non-union employee or official of oh, the okay. town. Oh, okay. Uh, they don't describe what official of the town means. So uh, we're covered. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So are we, uh, I think we had asked this question, are we an official of the town that would qualify in that case? Did we ask that question to the legal? Um, you can always point yourselves to the boards, but uh, well, legal legal doesn't have a good feeling about that. You'd have to be uh, watching yourself very carefully that there aren't any conflicts. But we could. Yes, you we could. We could all be the personnel board right here, all five of us, if we wanted to. Or we could nominate ourselves, and it would be up to them to put us in. <laughs> and, we, and then we could fire ourselves? Is that well, well, just, just seriously. Well, 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 this goes back. There is an omissions insurance. Well, we have, set, well, we have set a little bit of a precedent on this. You go back to the, um, um, not Council on Aging, sorry, but the uh, Housing Authority, we appointed because there was an open spot and there was contention on that board. You guys put me there until the election. So did we do it? We had it. We've had a little bit of a precedent there yeah. where we felt like, you know what, this is not working. We'll take care of it. When we do that, is that a try appointment or is that a just us board of selectmen? No, still has to be a try. try. That's still a try. So if we wanted to do that, it would be a nomination tonight. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through all our nominations. So we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Gary, did you get your question answered or you had it? Thank you, yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions on nominating Mr. Smolinski? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Accepting nomination still. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we, nom uh, we approve the nomination of Robert Watts to the Personnel Board with the term to expire on June 30th, 2014. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. I, I, I have, and I don't know maybe if we have done this before, but Mr. Richard, Bob, uh, Mr. Watts is on the, on the planning board also, right? Yes, he so is. with you on the planning board. Um, is, there any, is there any feeling or any issue? Again, I, I, don't, I, don't, I know Mr. Watts, you know, just from high and the by, but um, is there any issue with, Having two members from the same board on another board, is there any anybody has there been any issues with that in the past? We are both very independent thinkers. Again, I, I'm again taking the people out of it. I just just it's curious to know. Question. That's a very fair question. Yes. Oh, it's an extremely fair question. Right. Because that could that could be two well, votes he for. Came to me. <laughs> he came to me when he heard me asking board members if they knew anyone who would be willing to serve on the personnel board. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and asked me um, if I thought he'd be a fit. And Bob Watts is extremely intelligent. Right. And Again, I don't, I'm not into the person or the personnel. Just two people from the same board on another board. It starts, it, it could get, you know, again. I think uh, that like, needs to be a policy decision by... by right. And that's my only concern. It's not him, the person. It's two people from the same board unless it's mandated by, uh, uh, you know, uh, a bylaw or a legal trust. I know that Phil and I serve on, it has to be two selectmen on the uh, Affordable Housing Trust. And that's, you know, that's, uh, that's the way that was designed and voted 
voted on by uh, the townspeople. But my, you know, I just, I just, that's my only concern. And it's not Bob as a person or anything like it's that. It's just, fair, it's <coughs> fair, it's, yeah. I think it's a very fair question, but you also have to ask yourself, I mean, it's how, at what point it's hard enough to find people to volunteer. If one person wants to volunteer for more than one position and help out the town, uh, it's, it's very tough to find people. Well, to you don't have to tell me. We've been trying to find people to get. No. But, but I do share that same concern just as a general rule. I mean, if you have a nine-person board and you double up, it seems to me that there's enough diversity there. But if you – and let's say we ended up with three people. I, again, nothing to do with the people, but just it's the top of my head, it sounds like a situation we try, I would personally like to try and avoid if possible, with a, especially with a small group. Because well, here, here's, here's an example uh, specific to this. If – the one of the town planning staff mm -hmm. had a yeah. had an issue right mm -hmm. and was, were you know maybe the town planning staff was terminated and appealed their termination <laughs> right. mm -hmm. to take it to an extreme but it could happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they get two votes right. you know right. and, that and that's because it's personnel so that's my yeah. there is the HR over town right. here that that is just a concern in terms of Again, if it ends up being a three-person board and two are on the same committee, and you have what essence ends up almost being a conflict of interest in a situation like that. Yeah, the that's other my other members would have to should recuse themselves, and then we, if we only have two, then mm -hmm. one, no one, quorum. If I'm the chairman, one way around that is have an alternate. Does the bylaw allow well, for an the alternate? The problem though is if someone's not there, then you, you can still run into the same situation. You know what I mean? Because you could still have the so two other people. The point my law doesn't allow it. The point, that Mike, five. the point that Mike is, is raising is valid. Keep in mind, the planning department has a planner and a, and a part time assistant. Two employees. He's, he's got a valid point. Yeah. And that's my concern. That was my, mm -hmm. you know. It's I, very, it's yeah. very and valid. nothing against Bob. Jeez, you know. Because if three people had to recuse, yeah. then right. it was your board. Nothing personal. It's just putting two people from the same board. On a, such a small board, I, I'm concerned. Well, at this point, the field is open still in terms of this is a nomination. Right. Um, so I think I think that discussion will come up again on the actual vote to appoint. Um, so unless there's any other comment, we'll, uh, um, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Three to two. I move that we appoint Alan Olson Sr. to the Personnel Board, board to with a term to expire on June 30th, 2014. Just to clarify, are we nominating or appointing? Nominating. Nominating. Second. Did I say appoint? Yeah. I move that we nominate <laughs> Alan Olson Sr. to the Personnel Board with a term to expire June 30th, 2014. Second. Okay, we'll figure out what to do with that first yeah. motion for the second. For the second motion, <laughs> this is for the nomination motion. All the uh, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, can, do I have to try and take I would a vote throw for that? my initial uh, uh, motion. Sorry. We need to, what's the process when That's he withdraws right. anything? Uh, it wasn't second. It wasn't it second. Was, it was, yeah, it was second. second. That's why I'm asking. Okay, you withdraw your second. I will withdraw the second on the first. <laughs> there we go. This is easy as pie. Um, okay, so we have f four nominations on the table, uh, correct? And so now, Mike, do that voodoo you do and walk us through the process. Well, since this is a selectman's meeting, I'd, I'd say you conduct the you poll the other uh, two voting Then ask them if they support the nomination. Uh, well, I'd say, call, you know, put somebody's name out there and say. Do they support that nomination? You know, I or nay. Okay. And then after that, we will then go through the appointment process, right? On those well, nominations. That would be the appointment, appointment process. process. That's it. It's that appointment. vote is the appointment it's process. Appointment. Make Nominations a motion, are done. Make yeah. a motion to appoint each individual. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but we're voting again on that then. 
No, we're no, not. no, you just, just voted. You and those, and those two. two. You just voted. We can take a recess. We get to be quiet. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's, I didn't understand that. You're so just that... transmitting the, 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 okay, we'll take a recess. the selectman's oh. vote. So we, so that was my question before, that we voted to nominate them for the process. That's yeah. the same as appointing them. No. Mm -hmm. No, you three will. It takes all three. Well, it takes a majority of the three. Right. So those four names have to get two votes between the three of three you. Of you have our nominations. Now set them forth with the other boards and make a vote on it. Okay. So but am I voting on behalf of the selectmen? Yes. yes. And can I not vote the way they voted? No. Okay, see that that was my question before because that's the same as a selectman making an appointment versus a nomination. Well, they, there's no guarantee they're going to get two votes. Uh, understand though, but um, okay, that was my misunderstanding because I would not have put forward two people from the same board if I knew they were both eligible. I thought there was going to be a vote after that for that's my confusion here. Uh, I thought there was, that's why I kept saying it was just the appointment of the nomination. Because um, I thought after I thought everybody had to agree on the appoint on the nominations, and then we so this is my misunderstanding, and then we voted on it. So, I get you a Robert's Rules book. Yeah. Well, well someone know, that, that voted in the Rules positive book. can you ask vote, for a revote, yeah. right? You can ask for uh, you can ask for a revote re to revote because you were on the positive. Uh, okay, I would uh, I would uh, ask for a revote on Bob Watts. So, so somebody's a second. Second. Okay. So again, discussion. I apologize. It was not. It was my misunderstanding. This is not. Uh, I actually. I, I. I don't know Bob, and this is not a personal thing. Mm -hmm. This is a two board people sharing it, and I think that's a conflict and um, um, potential conflict. And so potential potential conflict. Thank you. And so we have two board members. So I've I've chosen to, to look at uh, Bob Watts to be fair. Uh, Chris Rich is also in that same boat. They're both on the committee. So I, I picked this person. If, if, and so I don't want to say I'm, I'm picking the person that I want to eliminate per se in terms of voting for the board. But um, that's why I asked for the revote there. It was my misunderstanding of the process. So. Mr. Chair, I move that we nominate Robert Watts to the Personnel Board with the term to expire on June 14, 2014. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a, 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 it was a vote to reconsider, vote so to all reconsider. we have to do is vote. You have to vote to reconsider. Right. You have to vote for that motion to reconsider. Right. Oh, you second. Then we didn't get you a vote, vote right. for exactly. Yes. Then you vote the way you want. <laughs> okay. All those in favor <laughs> of oh, sorry. Gary, wait, 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 Gary, right? do you have a comment? Well, yeah, you I, only I, get to do that I, once. We, we, still have the on it, correct? Hey, we can still have some discussion on it, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. If there's a nomination, yes, after this reconsideration, right? All we're voting on is to reconsider the initial vote that we took on that nomination. Correct. That's correct. all we're voting. Do you do discussion during a reconsideration? Okay, never mind. I'll, I'll most. You can, yeah. Nope. If, in other words, we're, we're going we're gonna to right. take our votes over again. All those in favor of reconsidering this vote, say aye. 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 Is that unanimous? Okay. okay. Now, I will accept any other nominations. Well, no, no, you no have to we're just re-voting. Re That's all we're doing. He's been already nominated. Oh, it's just a re-vote? Oh, I don't have to re-nominate. He nope. doesn't have to re-nominate. Re-vote. Right. Okay. We're just going to... Okay, so... On whom? Mr. Watts. Mr. Watts. Yes. Mr. Watts, re-vote. Discussion. Yes. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now we're there. Gary. And it, I, I, under, I completely understand and, and, I, and I thoroughly agree that perhaps we need a procedure going forward. And, and maybe tonight is the night to make that procedure. But as we've said, we are, some people feel that there's been a problem getting a quorum of this board. We now have a chance tonight to appoint four people and I would say that perhaps um, that the person the two people that we're talking about on that that we will be appointing or voting on uh, members of the community that have been voted to the planning board and I would well, hope that 
they would recuse themselves if they felt there was a conflict going forward. And since this is only, we're talking about six months here, I think in an effort to have a working board and that we better have no more than this that we would move forward. And we still have room for one more person to come on that board, correct? Mm -hmm. And so then they could accuse themselves if there was an issue going forward. And if we did have a, you know, if we were able to get five people on this board. So I, I just, I, I think, yes, we are going to need a policy perhaps, and, and this would be on all appointments, as you say, but I, I don't know how many would come forward to us like similar to this. But right. I, I, I just, I guess that's it. I, I think that we could, we, we, the people could recuse themselves. And if, right. I guess my concern is they wouldn't have to recuse themselves. Correct. I, I agree. So that's the thing we that's, don't control. Once we cast this vote, we don't control that. Um, and I would say, yeah. if if uh, Robert's not successful tonight, if that should another person came on board, if we haven't totally irritated him <laughs> by doing by not having him be successful tonight, that we we could we could then revisit that in terms of the larger quorum. So I, I all good arguments getting a quorum and all that, but I think it still creates a possibility of conflict and. We can't guarantee solutions for everything, but if we can take a step that we know reduces that, that's where my opinion comes that we should do it. And again, no reflection on, on the person. I mean, the, the, the planning board is one of the most involved type of and, and time-consuming boards. So uh, right. no reflection on, on the hard work that is there. It's more a matter of kind of uh, the policy inside my head, I guess, Gary, until we get one. No, I understand. There, there is another way, and <laughs> we could perhaps just keep appointing him every other month. We could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. So. Chairman, I'm just looking to get the board filled. We, well, we, we, we got three. We got three. three people, and we, like I say, we put this off till December, and now have a chance to fill the. the well, we board, can fill the board with. We can fill the board with, board with three. And if through the nomination process one of those three doesn't make it, we can reconsider again. Mr. Chairman, I would volunteer to serve until June 30th, 2014. If, if so, this board would so nominate me. Okay. But well, we're not there yet, but that's good. Okay. So that, that, are, are you, are you, are you saying in, as the fifth person? No, as the fourth person, if you want. Yeah, again, mine's not the numbers issue. It's just, it's just uh, my wife's, uh, I hope my wife's not watching. <laughs> I'll do it. He just got cold in so the anyway, uh, you know move, that, right? Mr. Chairman, move the question. <clears throat> I want a whole reclassification of 300 employees. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, move the question, please. <laughs> okay. So, question's been moved. <laughs> Wait, don't do that. It's not town meeting. I don't know that procedure. Or just go. Alicia. We vote right now. Just All right. go. Uh, go. All those in favor of uh, Robert Watts' nomination, uh, I, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. Now, before we move on, since Dave is... I move that we, that we <laughs> nominate Dave Surface to the personnel <laughs> board. Let the term expire on June 14, 2014. June 30th. June 30th, 2014. Thank you. Sir, second. Second. Okay. Boy, that was a long pause. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very enthusiastic. I had to think about it. Pretty reluctant. Wow. <laughs> yeah. right. I was waiting for Gary, but you know, he was dragging his heels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, coal Christmas in the stocking yeah. there, buddy? <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> yes. I think Dave's a fine, a fine character person. I think I've had a little bit of uh, exposure to uh, personnel issues. Yeah, <laughs> my own job. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I agree, but um, just, just to help me, if uh, two more people that seem suitable came forward, you'd I'll be step willing down. to step down sure. if there was no pressing yeah. issues yeah. In, in, in front down. of you. Oh, okay. So this can function with three people. We don't need four, right? 
You need four. You need four? Four increases the probability of getting a quorum. Quorum, yeah. Oh. That's hold, him. hold on a second. Let's, I want to make sure we get all this piece of it here. Um, but you, you also, f if you have a quorum and you have four people there, you have a chance of a tie. Yes. On a vote. So you better off appointing three. Um, or looking for five. Or, or looking for, or looking yeah. for that. Fifth. Or sure. we find out who's going to be at the meeting, and Dave's busy that day. <laughs> Let them handle it. I mean, I, it's more for the conflict issue. You know, mm -hmm. if something comes up and there's yeah, a quorum, I, and something needs to be done immediately, then right. then I'll be there. But otherwise. Let the other three handle it. I'll just almost kind of like an alternate, but not so being an alternate. It's the same if four of us showed up for a meeting. You can still have yeah. it. Yeah. It, it, it happens no. with any and, 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 and again, I'm, I'm, I've got, there's no issue here for me on, on, on Mr. Watts or anything like that. I appreciate him stepping forward, but it's a conflict piece that. Um, All right, so we're on the day about. piece. Yeah. Um, any other discussion? Do we feel that that puts us as a board in any conflict at a later date on things coming forward? Well, where you're the final adjudicator after the personnel board, Dave would, would probably have to recuse yeah. himself from the personnel board because he's going to be the final adjudicator. Similar to what we were hoping Mr. Yeah, Watts would do. Or mm -hmm. I could recuse myself here and say, I'm right. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm out at this right. level. Just to get it here, and then you guys so, handle it. I, I guess on the same thing, then we're, we're possibly creating this, the same situation that we were trying to avoid by not by the board. But it's a different. It's a, it, no, it's a different conflict because you can have a person on the new school building committee and the, who's a selectman. I mean, you get one vote, right? So I mean, it's not. A, the, I guess is. We're on three or four other committees already. Yeah, so well, I understand myself. I would say it's a little different because you're not going to have people from the same board who are potentially overseeing the same people. That's my opinion. Any more discussion? Mr. Rich, Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, um, if you only appoint three members. We're back in the same position we were. Only one person ha can be in a position where they cannot make a meeting. But we're talking about pointing four right now, though. Our board is, is if we vote yes on this, we'll be bringing four people forward. Four people. Mm -hmm. If we vote yes. All right, I think it's a great idea. I think if Dave gives you hell and causes all sorts of trouble over there, we don't have to reappoint him. Well, we call him. On June, January, on July 1st. <laughs> Recall. If, 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 if one other thing, I mean, if, and I know you have the, with the problem of two people from one board, one other board being on the same board together. Um, if there are four people on the board, and I re recuse myself because there's a conflict, Three can vote. If there's five people on the board, um, and Mr. Uh, four, four appointments that are before you tonight, plus Mr. Service, and two of us had to recuse ourselves, you still have a quorum. And you don't lose the person who wants to volunteer for the town. Mm -hmm. My problem is, is what's, what are we telling the public? who want to volunteer their time to help out the town because they hold an elected position on another board that because but, but, it's, but it's not because they have an elected position it's because two people on that same board and it's personnel it's, it's, it. it's human resources related creates a potential and, and my conflict. volunteering was temporary to recuse and there were five people you still have but there's board. no rule that says they have to recuse so once we put well, it in motion the law says you have to yeah. recuse if there's an appearance of impropriety mm -hmm. an appearance of impropriety you but must recuse yourself so that it doesn't happen and then it goes to a really long legal battle it does not mean at the time it has to happen i'm just saying there's no control once that die is cast that that you can that that would be the case <laughs> You for, but you forgot my initial volunteering was till June, and that's it. So in the meantime, look for somebody else, 
and you know, if if you need me, I'll be there. If if not, then I then then I don't, then I don't need right. to be there. So right. it's only a temporary thing, Chris. Look for somebody else for the fourth member. And I do want to, the focus on the, the vote on the table is for is, is uh, for for Dave Surface at this point. Correct. So just just to clarify what what discussion is, just to focus it back on that. Well, right. if I may, and I, I I can't support you in this, Dave. I I could if you were the fifth person, but but to replace the guy that we felt wouldn't recuse himself, and and you could possibly be in a situ similar situation. I I mean I. I just don't see it that way. I, I mean, if you were, if you were going to be the fifth pe person, yes. But no. well, why would you see him having to recuse himself? Yeah, this shouldn't be shouldn't be any reason why There's I need to recuse myself. People to, not two board people, not two people from the same board gang. Why would we see the two planning persons having to recuse himself? You can't predict that. Can you give me a reason? How well, if if it was someone from the personnel board and there were two people that could drive the majority. Employee. If. if yeah. Huh? Now, it, Mike can't even could possibly an employee that was doing something to the town on a part time basis that would come under the personnel board. Oh, we're getting large. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. First of, all, and I'm, first of all, they have to get permission to me to have a second job, and I wouldn't give it to them in the first place if they wanted to continue with employment at St. Jean's. Period. Job. Yeah. They have to have permission from the right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So, uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Again, I think. For now, to help ensure a quorum, for me, it makes sense. It's not the permanent solution, but it's trying to drive. A f because one of the big challenges here is not that it's been a controversial vote, right? That we can't get things through the personnel vote because it's been controversial. I haven't heard that once. It's getting the quorum in place, right? right? So I'd like to, it just helps an insurance chip. I think Dave's objective to get that quorum in place so that the, the group can function. No, I mean, I, I see Gary's point. You know, I can, I, I definitely understand where Gary's coming from. But I said it was temporary, and I wouldn't want to be the fifth person. So that's the point. If I'm the fifth person, I'm not going to do it, because there's no need for me there. Four is enough. I'm not quite understanding that. Okay. So you're going to want a board. I'm almost going to be an alternate in a way, but I'll be a member. If they need me, I'll be there. If if they can't have a quorum of the other people, based on my schedule, it's pure, pure and simple. Then for me, all, all, all the more reason not not to appoint you. I mean, you're you're, you're asking to be appointed to a board that you're saying that you you're, that you're not going to make unless you need it. Okay. okay. I just volunteered it. Just an idea. Fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we still have other, well, one other voter in this whole process too. So, um, all the I'm going to take the vote. <laughs> all those in favor of appointing Dave's uh, nominating Dave Surface. Say aye. 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 And if it keeps him away from me for more time, that's why I'm doing aye. it. Opposed. Yay. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. <laughs> Three one one. Good discussions. Not a clear cut issue. Yep. Okay. So now we're back where we were before. <laughs> I have no idea what you told me to do last time, so I'm gonna ask you so I'm gonna uh I'm do I bring up one of the Four names and asked to do we the vote other on Olson vote? Yeah. Vote. Yes. Okay. So I, I would. I'll start on this page. Uh, I'd I bring too. up. We uh, the board of selectmen have, have nominated uh, John Smolinski to participate, uh, be a part of the personnel board. Appointed. Appointed. Well, we've nominated, but to be appointed to the personnel board. Are you? My turn. <laughs> Your turn. I abstain. Okay. And I from the selectmen. So that's two. Two yes, one abstain. Did someone second it? I don't think you have to. They don't. No, I don't no, think you have to. You just I don't have think to. You have to. It's a different kind of vote. Nominate. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Beverly is a committee of one. Do you need the dates in that? No. Well, we had it on our nomination. Do we need to? Yeah, you should. Okay. Uh, we've not. The board of selectmen has nominated John Smolinski for the. Uh, personnel board with a, a term to expire June 30th, 2014. How do you vote? Aye. And abstain. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. So then we have uh, uh, Christopher Rich. The, the Board of Selectmen have nominated Christopher Rich to be on the personnel board. Uh, with the term to expire June 30th, 2014. How do you vote? 
Aye. And abstain. And I from the selectmen. Okay. Check, check. Okay. Um, the Board of Selectmen have nominated Alan Olson Sr. Uh, to be on the personnel board with a uh, term to expire June 30th, 2014. How do you vote? Aye. Abstain. And the board votes aye. So the Board of Selectmen aye. Okay. So, um, the Board of Selectmen have nominated Dave Surface uh, to be appointed to the personnel board with the term to expire June 30th, 2014. How do you vote? Hmm. <laughs> I abstained. And oh! oh. <laughs> I, he, he can't I just right. I have a I direction. From, I've been I, directed. I from, yeah, I from the select. You could have said, Mr. Chairman, you know, as much as I, I want to, I have to abstain. I don't blame you, Jim. Yeah, there was no remorse there. There was no yeah, love yeah. lost there whatsoever. Thanks. Okay. Beverly, I, I, like, the, I like the hesitation. <laughs> now, we've concluded. Sorry. We now have a uh, personnel board with a quorum. And uh, good luck. Congratulations. We're looking forward to uh, seeing progress and for your time. evaluating in the spring. Mr. Chairman, I have to go to the town clerk if you swear in. Yes. Go swear in. <laughs> Tomorrow. Guys, I will tell you, we spent a lot of time on this. And uh, it just shows that there's a lot of thought that has to go into personnel issues in town. So yep. I'm glad. Absolutely. I prefer that we had finished an hour earlier. But we had to talk to this. Any any we had to talk this through. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Talk to you soon, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Selectman. Um, okay. If I don't see you all. Have a very merry Christmas. You too. You, you too. too. Merry Christmas to you. Good New Year. It's me. Is that your stuff or mine? Uh, yeah, that's probably mine. Okay, so so National Grid, grid Right of Way Notice of Appeal. Yeah, this this is somewhat connected to uh, the rec path, uh, and Jeff Wade could better speak to this. But uh, basically, what happened the Towns Conservation Commission gave them kind of a pass, and the DP didn't like it. Mm. They said you weren't strict enough. We're appealing your decision. Okay. Uh, according to, to Steve Przemski, it's going to get done, but it has to follow a a, a better process. So, What's a better process? Well, they I think they have to. I, I can't answer that question. They got to defend why they made a decision stronger on our end. We've got to defend as a conservation commission. And so they have to re vote or whatever? Well, maybe. or maybe re hear. I, I don't know what the process is. That's why uh, Jeff could speak to it better than I could. But uh, I mean, that letter just showed up. And, if I could, though, in, in a third paragraph, the, the very bottom, it says the Mass DEP withdraws its appeal. The, the, or in the alternative, it's if um, if you read it, it says no okay, activity I, shall I, commence. It, I found it confusing, so please ex help me. <laughs> I guess uh, it's it, what it says is that in preparation for the superseding of, of applicability, right. the will they'll schedule a site evaluation within all the parties. No right. activity shall commence on it. I agree until the DEP. Um, uh, either t until all the appeal, appeal periods have last lapsed or the DEP decides to withdraw their right. appeal. So they may just say, you know what, we've looked at this hard or enough. Or in the alternative. Okay, that's the part I'm right. missing. Yep. So they're saying they either withdraw their appeal. superseding okay. decision or we withdraw. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's more FYI, right? Yes. Okay. Well, it, will, if I may, sure. will we continue to be filled in? Because it says that they're going to do a site evaluation and this and that. And I mean, I don't know who... If, that's usually good. This was, uh, this, right. well, this is to the town of Georgetown, but the Conservation Commission is representing us on this, or 
basically. Yes. This is in yeah. front of us tonight. Yeah, is, they, is they can't uh, appeal to the, the Conservation Commission. They have to appeal to the Board of Selectmen. The, the Board of Selectmen okay. are the town, are the, um, if, it, if it ever got to a legal situation in court. I guess that's what I'm saying. Is it this? We're not just handing this over now to the Conservation Commission. This could be coming back to us for, as they say, scheduling a site review, and and this with the concerned party. But I, I think they they want to deal directly with the Conservation Conservation Commission. Okay. I, I don't see the board getting. This is almost like correspondence to us, right? Yes. Versus new world business. Mm -hmm. I mean, not disputing the topic. But right. Oh, really, just an is, FYI. He just said that the appeal goes before us at at a court level. Okay. I mean, they you were just CC'd. You weren't even CC'd. Um, well, that's just a county judge. It was it was, mm. it was sent to the conservation commission. We gave you a copy to keep you informed of the situation. FYI. Well, it's a carbon copy to the Conservation Commission, so I would say that that means that it's, it is sent to Board of Selectmen. Well, it's addressed to the town of Georgetown. But ultimately, this is going to be something that the Conservation Commission is going to have to deal with, right? I guess is what Mike well, was saying. That's what I'm trying to say. What's the, what's the appeals? Is it, are we the appeals or is it the court? <laughs> no, it's the, the DEP, I, and like I said, I don't have all the information. Jeff was going to speak to this. Maybe Jeff can come in on January 6th. Is that our next one? He, he, he wanted to be on the agenda after he meets with the Department of Transportation. His meeting with the DOT is not until the 8th of January. Okay. Well, yeah, whenever it makes sense. I think that's the best thing is to hear from, from him exactly what's going on. Or in the alternative, Steve. Right, but after. Yeah. We're a little smarter, if possible, or wiser, I should say. I get them both here at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, CPC request for flagpole at Union Cemetery. The question of under whose jurisdiction? I'm pretty sure that's the personnel board. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I vote to approve. Isn't Dave bring it up? Motion to appropriate the money to uh, install a light at the. <laughs> Uh -huh. No, uh, <laughs> uh, the Don Cudmore, I believe, as a citizen Don Cudmore, made a proposal before the CPC for a flag, for the, for the flag being to be lit. Uh, but the the committee, the CPC committee, wanted to clarify who's responsible for the Union Cemetery. Um, they were aware that the Historical Society came before the, the Board of Selectmen and asked to be put in charge of it. I don't think there was ever an official vote or anything designating them as the caretakers of the uh, Union Cemetery. So I, I think it's, it's a, you know, who should be requesting this? The, Historical society or a private citizen? Well, the reality is that this is going to have to go to the town, like for money appropriation, and it's just like a regular CPC type vote. If it's CPC, yeah, funds. CPC has to vote on it first. Somebody's so, got to be named as the uh, spending authority. If I may, typically the way they've been handling this, if a private citizen comes, they try to put them in touch with somebody on a board or committee in town to help go through this and where Don came through with this. So I think normally, I, I've only been there a short time, they would probably put this off to perhaps the historical committee because they want to make sure that you get a probably a flagpole that fits the time period of the cemetery and for one thing, um, that it perhaps be put in the right place but I think it was considered that the historical committee 
doesn't really have the authority. Well, so, so do we, as a board, I guess, want to say, yes, let's let the historical committee handle it, or at some point we need to make that decision. That right. well, they, anyone can bring us the bio, anyone can bring us the warrant article, right? Technically, the CPC suggestion. I'm just this, this is the way. It's, this is a CPC. Yeah, warrant article though. Right. And I mean, Don, if, if Don wanted to get a petition warrant article, he could raise the money, but it wouldn't come from CPC. It would come from some other. Right, right, right. I guarantee I'm, I'm on the historic committee that they would want to have um, and would be willing to <coughs> take this particular project um, and oversee it. But they also came to us looking for us to grant them authority to manage the yeah the, uh, all the cemeteries in town yep. yes yep. I, we didn't Not take a vote on well, that. It was, it was, it was it just union yeah okay yeah. and then it was the other two were they're private park and rent or oh, those were the five okay. yeah yep so what is our role in this process then? i guess uh, a point to the historical society is the care commission um, uh, the the, the commission as the uh, I don't know. Uh, how how about managing? Authority? How about just? How about yeah. just? How about just uh, in charge of requesting a flagpole at Union Cemetery? Why don't we keep it simple to the request at hand? Because I, I mean, because typically the way the CPC works, they like a board to work with the person going forward. Sometimes the requests might have come from the historical committee. Or the society, but it didn't. It came from a private citizen, and so as you can see on here, it, it, have you already contacted a town board about this project? And the answer was no. So typically, the CPC tries to guide them towards a board. Into a board. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Is can we guide them to the so historical society. They're looking yeah, for yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, it, that was yeah. my question. Or it could be this board because we are officially <laughs> the caretakers. So I guess the question before us is, do we want to pass it on? The historical, that's, that's, or do we want to be the guiding? Force? That was my unofficial proposal: was to <laughs> nominate or appoint the rather than do the whole cemetery, which I don't know if that's a bigger issue or not. We can at least address this issue. Yeah. Spending authority for the flagpole and lighting. Yes. So moved. <laughs> Thank you. I think there you go, Gary. How about we make a recommendation? So, Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation that uh, we. <laughs> Uh, a, rec a uh, recommendation to CPC that the Historical Commission be responsible for the uh, handling the replacement request for the flagpole and lighting at Union, Ce Union Cemetery on East Main Street. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, all right. Mike, I apologize. I'm not up to speed on this one. I'm not even going to pretend. Mutual aid opt-in form, Public Works Municipal Mutual Aid Agreement. This is similar to uh, fire mutual oh, aid, oh, yeah, yeah. but it's just the uh, I gotcha. uh, highway department. Since Pete is in favor of it, absolutely. Okay, yes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, accept a mutual, uh, yeah, that we participate in a mutual aid opt-in agreement. Uh, for the Public Works Municipal Mutual Aid. Second. Statewide Mutual Aid, so. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> this is something we've done this in the past, correct? This is only this new. No, this is no, I remember this seeing this for I remember, Parks. I don't think, I we haven't Police, did police and fire, but not. Being talked about, uh, but no, this is, this yeah. is new. It's the first time, I think, Gary. We, we, we do police and fire, but. So the mutual aid would be plowing or whatever, and whatever they might need, road work, yes, culvert, whatever, issue, you know, emergency uh, flooding, whatever, you know, yeah. If there's a flood in another part of the state, yeah, and they, they need, need road repairs, they need uh, back end loaders, front yeah. end loaders. I mean, trucks. We would send our equipment and and uh, and pay for it ourselves. Okay, yeah. now the, the only question that, that would come to mind if this is something we're new and doing, if somebody came into town to help us on the other end, would that possibly do anything with us with prevailing wage or anything of that no. sort? No, this, 
municipality, I mean, these are municipal workers. Yeah, I think the state's that, just only pure. Okay, I, I just didn't know if perhaps we, we all of a sudden might, they're, they're working together with somebody else and all of a sudden we got to raise the salaries or, or something. Yeah, because. I think the state is just, uh, you know, asking that the town is an agreement to, to accept help from the state on particular mm -hmm. uh, transportation issues. You know, it's like if there's a uh, disaster. Uh, the governor no, of the I'm state honest. would have to say, yes, I'll take federal aid. Well, I get down a few notches. It's the same, same, same. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we, we could be sending our workers out somewhere else. Oh, so right. That's what I believe right. I might right. say. Right. Cold place. <clears throat> that's why it's being called. So we wouldn't, but we wouldn't do that and put our town in a shortage or anything. That would sort of be... No, that's why I, I use the example of a, 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 a flood in another part of the state because if, if, if flooded here, it's probably going to flood in Raleigh and Boxford and, and Groveland. So, we, you know, we're not going to send our people, you know, unless it's a highly localized event. Uh, and, in, you know, that, that's not what they have in mind. I don't believe that's what they have in mind. Okay. But I mean, we could be, we, we'd be paying like, like we could be sending some of our guys perhaps out to Worcester if something happened and we'd still be paying That's the correct. salary. Yes. Yep. And we wouldn't have anybody here in town. But possibly. But we, they might not be needed because if we didn't have the same similar disaster and we could possibly get help from someplace else. Yeah, like send a, a man and a loader, you know. Okay. For a day or so two. So it could be equipment also. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm just, just, I'm just doing my best to understand. And is this like a one-year thing, or is this like an in perpetuity? Uh, I think it's a. Well, I guess you know, you're in it till you withdraw. We could opt out, I guess, because yeah, it's uh, we're opting in. Okay. Did we get a motion on this? I'm sorry. Yep. We did. Okay. I knew we were having discussion. Any more discussion? I just I I don't want to support this tonight because I, it's just it's it's been laid on us and we don't seem to really understand. It, it seems simple. Sometimes these simple things aren't always as simple as they seem. Well, Understood. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Four one. Okay, uh, renewals, license renewals. Uh, who would ever like to take the bowling ball and run? We're not going to see the, uh, anything on Elm Street, the engineering contract? No, it hasn't been approved. Uh, it hasn't gone through uh, legal review yet. Okay. It's coming. Here, one thing on that, and I've talked to Mike about that, is you know, Elm Street is the oldest public street, in the, if, if I read my history correct, in the town. And there's a um, uh, there's a sensitivity to make sure that whatever we um, rehabilitate to has some sense of maintaining some sort of characteristic of a historic uh, road in town. And um, the only thing I would ask is is that uh, we have an opportunity for uh, the historic committee to review. The, um, the contract, which I think they should have probably reviewed the specifications before we went to um, a contract. But needless to say, um, I, I think it's just a, one of those things that, that they should be involved in, just to make sure that we're not uh, just laying down concrete and asphalt and um, the, the, you know, the street loses a lot of its uh, character. Mr. Chairman, if I might make a suggestion, I, should, I think we should have a public hearing on it. There's, there are other people that want to weigh in on, on what's going to go on on Elm okay. Street. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Who put this forth? I mean, I, I know we've, we've hashed this around in, in the past, but I mean, this is, a, this is an engineering contract for approval. I mean, when did this, was this? Peter's been working on this, right? Sure. This is the one Peter Town meeting the, approved sure. it. Uh, right. Last year. Last fall town meeting. 
fall town meeting. Yes. With the school. With, okay, that's what, so this was. This was direct, bonded. This was directly tied in with the school. No. No. No, no it, was, it was voted at the same time. It was voted at the same meeting. But separate because the, it is, the it financing is, was different. Yeah, the warrants are not related in the warrant language. The projects are, though. Right. And this was Peter. Peter was handling this because he had come and given oh, us some preliminary we, numbers, and he had he had an engineer look at I, it. I, I remember. I remember talking oh, about this and right. realizing that we'd have to do this. And I remember getting in figures, but I mean, was, this was this was actually voted on, mm -hmm. on to move forward at town meeting. Yeah, how much did we appropriate? One point eight million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, I'm remembering that thinking how you we were given bonding authority up to that m okay. total uh, with the idea that uh, other monies and town, you know, crew would do whatever work or do in kind of work. Right. Now, you, uh, now you're bringing me back. Okay. And, and Peter also suggested that <clears throat> if we became uh, the school became a member of the Safe Routes to School uh, organization. Uh, after uh, uh, years m being a member for at least a year, uh, you're eligible to apply for grant funding for Safe Routes to School, which this would qualify for. Yeah, uh, uh, and up to three to four hundred thousand dollars, I think Peter threw that number out. Thank you for bearing with me. Always good questions. <coughs> okay. This, this contract would be to set the design in motion, and the, the designer would also then be part of the uh, you know, construction um, management and doing the bid docs, uh, doing the construction documents. Uh, Take us through to actual bid, and uh, and then manage the project. Uh, you know, basically be the OPM for okay. the town. We okay. could because the the uh, uh, contract isn't finalized yet. We we could put a clause in that you know there, there shall be uh, you know. Con we can say there there shall be a public hearing uh, as part of the uh, you know at least one public hearing and uh, consultation with the historical commission to <coughs> make it contractual. Okay, I think that's probably a good idea. I'm not looking for cobblestones or anything. I'm just literally yeah, just getting no some input. No. Phil volunteers <laughs> to lay the cobblestones. That's good. Um, and actually, just kind of building on that thought, um, Jana, can we get uh, the school committee and school building committee back, whether it's January 6th or the one following? Um, I know they've done a lot of work to find a, a, a workable resolution, I believe, within the budget. Um, is it true that is the foundation being poured or poured or? Yeah, there's the there's, pad, I should yeah, say. Well, there's, they're, they're working on, the yeah. Footers. Footings Footer, and things yeah, yeah. like that and so, foundation pieces. And um, so whatever they think is more appropriate in terms of a timely update, but I think um, hopefully we'll, I'm not going to say we're not going to have any more surprises. Are we going to have an update? Are you going to give us an update on the situation over there tonight? Um, what the remediation is and the costs and the, what they're doing. I read some stuff in the paper, but our last meeting it was they were going to. Yes, I can. That'd be great. Sure. How do we do that for the renewals? Okay. Like right now? <laughs> <laughs> no. What's the update, right Mike? Now. <laughs> One okay. To uh, the, <laughs> let's see. It was a week ago, ago Monday. Um, the school building committee met after our OPM had been negotiating with the contractor rate. Um, and to get them back to work as quickly as possible and to get them to work under the required um, health and safety laws or, or plan, uh, the HASP, uh, 
uh, Great had to calculate what it was going to cost them to get people trained, uh, set up uh, washing stations for the trucks cause, and, and decontamination for the workers uh, and a whole myriad of other activities, uh, keeping uh, trades that uh, maybe didn't need the training or have to have the in, safety training. Yeah, in contact with the actual the dirt. Uh, they, they devised various methods of work that they could you know, uh, get in there and uh, say the steel workers, they're going to be working on a pad so they don't have to work in, they don't have to come into contact with the, the, the dirt directly. Now there's a problem with dust uh, and that's a separate issue altogether uh, but it, it they all come together uh, so the the cost for the one month delay in mobilizing and remobilizing the, the workforce plus all the costs uh, to implement this health and safety plan was one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars additional money, um, and then there's the second uh, part of that is the monitoring of the health and safety plan, making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, and monitoring the dust. Uh, they have detectors they put around the work site and uh, can uh, tell if there's too much dust crossing the border into the school area or a neighborhood, what have you, uh, because the uh, inhalation of arsenic-laced dust is, is a safety issue. Um, and, and they're supposed to keep the dust from, they're supposed to try to not create dust so they have to uh, mist everything when they're working to keep the dust down or, or at least uh, uh, hose it down before they start working and then after they uh, when they complete working and as I said they have to wash all their vehicles if they leave the site so they don't bring <coughs> the dust on the roads um, so that we the, the school bu building committee had to hire a LSP, a licensed site professional, to do all those types of, of work. Uh, we originally had a cost estimate from uh, Wilcox and Barton that DRA had hired initially to do this. The, the committee felt it would be behoove us. Well, number one, they did a, a peer review of Wilcox and Barton's um, plan. Uh, they hired an LSP to, to do the, the peer review and they basically agreed with Wilcox and Barton. In, in most instances, they did make uh, recommendations, you know, for uh, their cost savings. Um, doing things a slightly different way. Um, so the committee also thought, well, maybe we should ask the LS, the other LSP for a price, what it would cost them to implement this, this plan. And um, because they're an LSP, um, and there's an exemption from the uh, 30B procurement laws for engineers, architects, and like professions. I, uh, I did have a conversation with the legal counsel from the inspector general's office and asked them, did an LSP, uh, did, did do LSPs receive the same type of exemption? <coughs> and the attorney said, well, you're not going to like my answer. And I said, why? Because we don't know. 
So, uh, but about a week later, they, they called me back and said, yes, uh, they, they are exempt. So we didn't have to go out and bid, it, everything. bid everything because time was of the essence. We, this shutdown was costing. Um, and um, long story short, the, uh, L the second, the peer review LSP named Green Seal, who the town has had a, a lengthy history of working with on the TID site. They were the L they've been the LSP there for the last 10 years mm -hmm. and uh, so that's how we identified them in the first place they came in with a, a much lower cost estimate uh, not to exceed cost um, by uh, originally it was hundred and fifteen thousand dollars less than Wilcox and Barton when Wilcox and Barton learned that we were soliciting another bid they reduced their price uh, but it was uh, Green Seal was still seventy-five thousand dollars less than Wilcox and Barton, and, uh, to the tune of the, their total cost was two hundred thirty-nine thousand. Uh, so if you add the one point seven five million and the two thirty-nine, it comes out to one million nine hundred eighty thousand. And that's going to be the total cost of the remediation and the delays uh, <coughs> for the um, construction and the uh, arsenic abatement, mediate, uh, not abatement, but the remediation. Remediation. Thank right. you. Yep. And um, that's the bad news. The good news is the original bid. We had a, uh, a spending agreement with MSBA for the construction purposes for $36 million. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Brait's bid came in at $32 million. So we had a $4 million cushion. And that's where the $1.9, no, the, the $2 million additional costs will come okay. out of. We don't have to raise an appropriate additional money. Um, so the original $4 million savings is now $2 million savings from the original spending authority from MSBA. We're still spending $46 million for the whole project, but 36 is just for the uh, construction. construction. The other $10 million are soft costs that, uh, for uh, furniture, um, uh, technology, and uh, architect and OPM. Um, Quick question, though. Um, so we were four, 36, we're going to come in, we originally came in at 32. Do we actually say four or do we save two million because it was a 50 50 split? Well, that, no, we're saving the. This, not is, saving, this is all uh, site work, and we yeah. maxed out site work a long time that, ago. So we did over-appropriate in a way because of this. I, I understand where you go because I, I remember that budget. Yeah, okay. we're still only getting $20 million from, right. from uh, MSBA. Right. right. So the other question was uh, on the remediation piece, is that including the fields? Uh, yes. So that's everything? Yes. I mean, we're not going to have tailored fields when we're done. We're going to have fields Rock that have uh, loam on them, the yeah, fill right. and loam. Right. And the... It will cost additional to go... Well, that's my point. The lower field the fields. is now going to... There is not going to be a lower field. The, the lower right. field is going to come up... <laughs> Might be the upper field. Well, no, because they, they, they'll, <laughs> they'll keep them the same uh, right. if they have more fill they'll start putting it on the former upper field and, and grow them together. Trying to level them. So but that's good because I did not realize that is that that also includes capping the two fields that were never going to be touched. That's correct. Yeah, that's great. But so they, it's not a separate need, problem. To right, but they need to be, uh, you know, they still need another layer, meaning grass or infield or... That know. includes that. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, so you so just that that it's all in. All the, oh, it's the, the infields, the fencing, and everything. No, it, oh. it, no, 
No, that's no, where none I'm, of the you know backstops or fields. All it's going to get you is a level playing field. Going to have a field with grass on it, and then you have to do. So how are we going to pay for the, the 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 restoring the fields back to their original fields? Um, the that, infields, the, the, the backstops. Where's that money going to go? Do we have an idea of what that cost is? Because I no. I did ask them if they would get that at our last meeting, and have we gotten anything? And if not, would you mind? Giving us a sense so we're not surprised. No, I'd see a few hundred thousand bucks if you ask me worth of work that still has to be done to put those fields into ball fields. Well, but if you go back to where they are now, there's only one field there, and that's very questionable. There's three fields. No, there's there's two. There's two. There's a baseball field. There's the fences. If we say, but I'm saying in terms of actual fields, I mean, haven't been on them. They're just dust pits right now. They're really not. That's what I'm saying is to really put them back in play. I think this is a good opportunity. Obviously, we're going to have to work with GA and others. This is an opportunity to actually make them into a nice field because right now there's one okay, maybe not even okay field there, and then there's backstops. Right. It's going to have to be a community effort led right. by the school department. <coughs> but GA gets a lot of volunteers out there to clean up and fix and right. play in every year, so I'm not going to speak for them, but I do know there's sprinkler a lot of systems and well, all sprinkler that. Systems I mean, one of them already, right? That will be it's not usable anymore. Right. Well, I've already heard from a representative from the GAA who was not happy because they put, eight, I think it's $8,000 of their own money into it. Now it's just going to get ripped up. If we had known no, ahead No, it of won't time, get ripped up. It, it's contaminated. Oh, it will be it's buried. Destroyed. buried. No, it's going to get destroyed. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, the, so my question is, in all of this, because of the delay, have we come up with a number that we are going to present to the architects because of the delay in the phase? The second phase, can we calculate a number that, that we want we want to be reimbursed for? It's being worked on. Okay, good. Plus, if factor in somebody for GAA. I'll send you the email. But I got an email from a representative from GAA that said, "Hey, if we had known, we would have waited." Also, right. just you know, there's an email out there that I told them not to do that when they asked my opinion because this is an active construction site, and I said they're crazy to do it. So I just want to put it out there in right. case it's public record that not. Not disagreeing with the effort, but there is an email out there for me saying, don't do I don't even know where it is, system, you know, because yeah. I didn't think much about it, but I said, this is an actual constructive site. I wouldn't recommend doing an enhancement yeah, right now. When did they enhance it? Recently? It was last year. Oh, okay. yeah. Right? Last year. So, um, again, they took initiative. I can't knock that, but, uh, and also that field was not part of the scope of this project. Those right. two fields were not part of the scope of this project. So, technically, there was no delay or issue caused by this, so we're going to have to have this whole thing sorted out. But just putting it out there that... Right. Um, I just, you know, I want to make sure everybody keeps their heads about them. Can you please go back and ask them and get, you know, we, we, we need to get an idea of in two years from now, how much are we going to have to spend to restore those fields back into um, ball fields? So we still have two, two million available I think, I think for change Carol, orders. Can we take it out of that? That's not part of the project. Well, well maybe it is. It might be now. Well, maybe it is. Gary, you might be right. I yeah. mean, the, the wording is, you know, it's pretty loose. Pretty loose. Yeah. We've allowed them to put the dirt there, so right, yeah. Yeah. right. So, if I, if that's, you want a cost? So. Yeah, I just want a number. Yeah, yeah we, just, we we need plus, to see what plus that we is. need. We need to lay, We need we need a cushion there for for contingency. So we we already ate up fifty percent of the well. There was, there was a number in there in the beginning for contingency. What yeah, that was four hundred four hundred grand. We, yeah, we haven't. So we we ended up making it four point four million. Yeah. Now we're down to two point four. Two point four. So if you know, figure the uh, ball fields if we can get them in there, you know, I'd like to see that yeah. wrapped right into it. it. Would be great. So they're not going to be able to put a. Uh, yeah. Irrigation system in? Once they they no, will. will. They just can't. They lose the one that's in there because oh, okay. it's in contaminated soil. No, I get soil. that. I right. didn't know if there what, was an issue. Putting what they in. talked about, and they, pro I, I don't know if it was included in the actual in that 1.8 million, a two million dollar figure. Uh, I know at one point there was a discussion putting a, a geo technical. Um, Layer. Covering, uh, you know, a clock covering mm -hmm. over and then piling the dirt on top of it, too. Uh, so that would, you know. That was part of it. Yeah, which would be about, uh, you know, anywhere between a foot and a half to two feet of clean fill and, and topsoil. They said it would be about 18 inches. Yeah. Right. They wanted uh, to make sure they could put a sprinkler. So it was deemed a natural occurring 
Uh, it was deemed naturally occurring. Yep. So it's contamination. It but was. Can, I, can I ask? Uh, what? What? Oh, go ahead. I missed and it. It's, I read that it was deemed natural occurring. Now it, it's it's obviously not all site work. It's raising the cost of putting the building up because of having this person there to make sure that the people working on the building is safe. There's no appeals process where we can try to get this Mass School Building Authority to help with that end of it. I mean, I, I realize moving the dirt and that is part of the site work. But technically, but not they training are training the people for. But technically, they are because they've allowed us 36 million of, of which they share in. If we don't spend it all, they don't spend all their money. Now that we've jacked it up, they are taking care of 20. 50%. But to, but to clarify, though, I think it's not site work. I think the strategy right. is, though, is to do the site work in such eight. a way that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that no special training will be required by the construction workers, is, that, is what they're trying to do, is do the site work. They're trying to minimize. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's what, what, what they've so done is not minimize as many people on the site having to do the 40 hour training. So that's safety part training. Of, that's right. part of the plan, is, is to, okay. Yeah. But if I, to, to Gary's point, was. During construction, after site work is done, mm -hmm. they're starting to stick build now. Mm -hmm. If there's a person that has to stay on site because of the contamination. The LSP will still be monitored. Right. That piece, <coughs> right, is that considered site work or is that considered part of the construction? Yeah, I would think we're and not. That's what Gary's point is. And if oh, it is, we're getting half of it back. Yeah. Having that conversation with yeah. MSBA. They were right. discussing if, it. If they okay. can. Right, because we'd get 50 cents on the dollar so back. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. If they can call it something other than, or if it is something other than site work <clears throat> and can go into another classification, yeah. they, they are going to have that discussion with the MSBA. Okay. And I think yeah. Good. the MSBA would be willing to entertain the, the, you know, the thought anyway. Mm -hmm. If I could, one more question. Mm -hmm. While we are in the minutes that we approved earlier, uh, October 21st, one of the things that you brought forward at that time was we possibly were going up by a hundred thousand because of uh, the vendor was taking us to a hearing and, and some piece of connecting got. We, 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 how did we end up on that? Is it? Did that well, raise us up another hundred k? No, the appeal has not been decided. They've been going at this since October mm. at the uh, Attorney General's office. There's a, uh, one of the attorneys in the AG's office. That's her specialty. She hears uh, 149 uh, procurement, Chapter 149 procurement protest, which this is one, the, the second bidder thinks he should be the winning bid because the other bidder didn't bid all the project. Uh, it, there were the water, uh, fire uh, water people provided, and one of them had uh, their bid connecting to the water main, and the other one assumed that the contractor break was doing the connection. Yes. And that has not been uh, determined yet. Who's yeah? Because who's whose cost that's going to fall? Yeah, if, if I remember right, that's where the hundred k was coming in. Because I thought that it, second it bidder wasn't was, put in in the bidding process, but yet someone's got to pay for it. The second bidder was a hundred thousand dollars higher than the lowest bidder because one didn't include that work and one did. I mean, but the way it sort of does, sounded like the design, it wasn't there in the design, and that's somebody was going to have to pay for it because I thought the, the what would you call it, the overall construction person said, well, we're not doing it. It was supposed to be done. Well, unfortunately, the way I understand it is break didn't include it either. So somebody is going to have to include it. Mm. So the AG just figuring it out? <coughs> yes. Okay. Which is, too, going back to, so that was a good update. Thank you. Um, but getting the boards back in again, things like, because there were, so we talked about using the contingency that was created 
by the lower bid. But there are other contingencies in there. You know, and where are we on those contingencies? Question about the finishing the field is a, is a good question. Um, um, and then, you know, obviously as this goes through it, it, I think what, again, a lot of this, any lawsuits would be executive session, but there's always a commitment on the town's part. If we feel we were in the right and, and someone else was in the wrong, that we'll pursue it. Uh, and, and I didn't, if any other parties want to pursue that, I wanted to put out there before that, that I had put a document out there. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, people have to think, make the decisions they think is right for them. So hopefully, maybe it's not the 6th, maybe it's the 20th, um, based on your update there, that maybe we can get everybody together and kind of go through, well, where do we think the budget looks like and what's going on. Thanks for the update. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, appointments and approvals. And does anyone have any problem uh, with, uh, do I do you want me to separate these out um, by license, by? Well, by bullet point, you probably can do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, go by license. Anyway, okay. Uh, Sure, I move that we renew the license, the bowling license for Georgetown Bowling Lanes with an expiration of December 31st, 2014. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Uh, I move that we renew the common victual licenses for Barizal Convenience Incorporated DBA as Richdale, Georgetown Bowling Lanes, Nikki's Roast Beef and Pizza, and Utterly Divine. Second. To expire. Expire, to expire. expire on oh. December 31st, 2014. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I move that we renew the secondhand shop licenses for Settlers Antiques and Little Block of Shops expiring on December 31st, 2014. Second, and then we need some discussion, right? Second discussion. All funds paid on both? All up to date. Um, on both those licenses? Okay. Great. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. All right, this is our, oh, thank you, yes. Actually, let me do this public announcement, an important one. Uh, the Georgetown Fire Department reminds you that after snowfall to please clear a three-foot radius around fire hydrants near your home. I know that's heavy snow. A lot of times it's snowplow snow, but uh, in an emergency it would be important. So uh, please uh, do your part if you can to help keep those clear. Um, Janet, do we have any potential outstanding licenses or so forth that might require a uh, impromptu meeting of the board this year? Or are we we're all caught up? There's a couple small ones, but not, uh, not no liquor licenses or anything. That okay, nothing require. that would hold someone up from doing their business per se. Or okay, great. So that means we could be free and clear. Yeah, this last year was the first time in a long time, week, I think. Yeah, I know. Uh, last so uh, first, uh, last week of the month. Of course, thanks to uh, our, uh, our great team of Mike and Janet this year for all your hard work, and thanks to the board. And I hope uh, everybody has a fantastic holiday and New Year's. Any last business from the board before we part for the year? Just, I'll say one. Um, the flyer that went out in the um, light bills. Personal had about um, boards. nine people call in to volunteer to be on some boards and commissions. That's fantastic. That Yes. Right, and and Stu's been a uh, spirit Stu. leader driving that volunteer process. So thank you for that, and uh, everyone else who contributed forward. too. <laughs> and thank you to the volunteers for offering <laughs> your time. Absolutely. Uh, anything else that we want to offer before the year, Mr. Chairman? The sixth, uh, I'm probably not going to be here. I'll be on a plane coming back from uh, from uh, no, Florida. 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 Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm not going to be here either. I'm going to be uh, away traveling. So we're going to need to move that date. Yes, yeah, so and I may or may not be able to be here. Because I know I will not be here as well. So oh, look at that. it could be a four-week duration. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll talk about that uh, after, but um, let's make sure we can get the majority of the board here. <laughs> All right. Other than that, thank you, everybody, and uh, have a great holiday. Motion to adjourn. So moved. You said it. Oh, did you? Yeah, you did. Okay, second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Merry Christmas. I'll end with a bang. <laughs>